SpongeBob SquarePants Presents the Title Zone is another Nickelodeon's rating strap, starring everybody's favorite cartoon sponge. Instead of the event focusing on SpongeBob SquarePants proper, the Cash Cow Show shares the spotlight with its two spin offs, The Patrick Star Show and Camp Coral. The event was originally scheduled for November, but it was postponed to pair with another event, which turned out to be the premiere of Big Nate. And of course, the parody of the Twilight Zone occurred on Friday the 13th, the most superstitious day of the year. The Twilight Zone was a series about science fiction tropes, drama, and horror that often came with a twist ending. Despite its initial run ending over half a century ago, the series is still prominent in pop culture to this day. You're a very bad man, and you keep thinking bad thoughts about me! He was a bad man. So I turn him into a jack-in-the-box, and you mustn't think bad thoughts about me either, or I'll do the same thing to you. So does this watered-down version of the Twilight Zone hold up? Let's find out. The Title Zone presents itself as an anthology series with a loose thread running through each episode. Frenchie serves as the narrator for the shows and is our guide through the Title Zone. Despite being a SpongeBob special, the narrative starts with the Patrick Star Show and Shrinking Stars. When Patrick Starr invites Captain Quasar and his assistant Patron to his show, the guests inadvertently shrink the Starr family down to the size of pests. Grandpat Starr is the only one unaffected, but he thinks that the Starr family are vermin that need to be stomped out of existence. Drinking Stars is a fairly straightforward Tom and Jerry-like skit, with Grandpa being the hapless Tom and the rest of the Stars serving as the cunning Jerry. There is a couple of twists along the way because it is the title zone, but the wackiest show is arguably the most grounded story. The Tiny. Getting back to SpongeBob proper, we get a futuristic episode and welcome to Binary Bottom. SpongeBob SquarePants loves robots so much that it makes sense that one of the two SpongeBob episodes is all about robots. SpongeBob 279A offers a look at what life would be like if Bikini Bottom was all robots instead of fish. Well, not everybody's a robot. Plankbot, you forgot to wind yourself again. Thanks, Karen, my flesh and blood wife. And how they got away with rebranding Goo Lagoon as Lube Lagoon, I have no idea. Of course, they were talking about oil, right? You'd think that there would be a lot to talk about with this one, but it too is fairly straightforward. Well, except for the assimilation plot. Carolyn Lawrence steals the show as Sandtron. Who disturbs the sacred dome of Sandroid? I'll hog tie your actuators! While the first two episodes are arguably typical, the Camp Coral segment, The Switch Glitch, is where it starts to get weird. Karen and Patrick accidentally switch bodies. It's a kind of grass is always greener story with a horror type twist. Karen and Patrick both get excitement with their new bodies, but ultimately decide it's better to be themselves. If you're big on chase sequences and rubbery arms, then this episode is for you. If not, then it's largely passable. Oh, pain! Fascinating! Ooh, someone kick me for more pain! As Camp Coral seeks to turn Spongebob characters into Muppet Babies, the last full episode gives us the most Spongebob-like plot, and it's arguably the best of the series. You're Going to Payphone is a story about Mr. Krabs getting more than he bargained for when he gets a cursed payphone. The episode is what I expected from the title zone, and it's probably why it's my favorite of the four. The payphone hypnotizes Mr. Krabs into giving away all of his worldly possessions, and it's humorous to see. Gives off vibes of The Algae's Always Greener and Born Again Crabs with a macabre twist stirred in. Sometimes Mr. Krabs is the villain protagonist, but it's hard to say whether anyone will feel sorry for him in this story. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for. We've saved the best for last. <laughs> a Skin Wrinkle in Time focuses on Grandpa Star as his travels in the title zone that we've seen throughout the series come to a close. This short is disappointing because it's a short. We wanted to see a full episode of Grandpa. Well, I guess we gotta consider Shrinking Stars as our Grandpa show. Once again, the best character of the Patrick Star show gets shafted again. Will Dana Snyder ever get his moment in the spotlight? Eh, close enough. Well, most of these shows were parodies of The Simpsons' Ditterati and their Treehouse of Horror shows. 
Sad, 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 sad. Mom, stop! According to this, it says Bart mixed up his DNA with the flies. I think that's Bart. Slowly, slowly, don't make a sound. Don't even think, because he can hear your thoughts. And when he's least expecting it, bash his head into the chair and the monster. <laughs> This is the Golden Age Simpsons we're talking about. Of course, I'd recommend that you watch that over this. But let's face it, these are two different target audiences that we're talking about here. So, you know, I wish there was more Grand Pet Star. What are you gonna do? Here's a quick ranking of the four shows from worst to best. And let me know what you thought about the title zone in the comments below. This is Titanius, turning off the TV. See you next time. Bye.